yeah so let's talk about uh, where we are right so we started from here i'm going to repeat this process okay so do you guys understand uh the acceptance criteria to the feature feature to the step definition and uh, we looked at last two sessions here uh like we've learned some basic ruby syntax uh what you need to know from test test automation perspective and uh, the page object so we actually started building out some classes right uh, classes are nothing but the page objects now there is also a framework for the page objects okay there is a specific framework so which we'll talk on next uh, sunday okay the framework uh, what, there is a different framework so that is used by a lot of different companies as well so but in order to do that you have to understand how you can build without the framework and then we'll deliver the framework so right now you guys are building the you guys wrote the classes and how do you integrate basically uh, from here to here right so today what we'll do is we'll actually dive into the water part of it and actually be complete the automation test okay so now today by another day you should have at least a couple of tests end-to-end -end written from acceptance test to actually executing and simulating the user action okay building from scratch so we'll build on uh, our example of Bing search and loan calculator those two so I sent you guys the project in the zip file okay so if you haven't done it right if you did not finish it then I would suggest you copy download that file uh, zip file in your on your machine and unzip it and open that as a project okay that is what we left off yesterday so you're gonna need that in order to build the last portion all right uh, if you already did that then you don't have to worry about it then you are good you don't have to download okay so let's talk about the this uh, last part which is the uh, web drivers and see how do they fit in into the uh, into this process automation process Does anybody know these three folks are coming or not? She is going to be here. What about she is on the way? Okay. Um, I'm not sure how far they are, but I don't want them to miss this part. Otherwise, they'll struggle. Okay, a little bit. So let's talk about one more thing. If you have any question, then we can we can certainly go over yesterday's part. Okay. Um, did everybody finished up right? Most of the most of you, both of them. Let me go back here. So let's see where we were, right? So yesterday we have two feature files in the project here. Um, right. So here I have a couple of feature files here, uh, which is a Bing search and uh, loan calculator feature here. So let's take a look at the Bing search part. So we had one scenario, right? Uh, we have one scenario and then we created a step definition. Uh, my underscore steps, that's what I have. You might have a different one. And here we basically have the uh, all the steps. Let me come to my class name is Bing search. Whatever the file name is Bing search new, but the class is Bing search, right? I was telling you that uh, it can be different. Both of them uh, can be different. So as long as you have the class name, that's what you have to integrate within your uh, step definition. Okay, not the file name. The file names can be ABC, doesn't really matter. Uh, but here in this class, I have four methods. Now, how did we come up with the methods? Each and every step, right? So each and every step will correspond to the method here, one method. Okay. Um, so I have visit Bing. Uh, that's that's what uh, it is part of, like a, this first step here, right? Given I am on a Bing page, so I have to go to the Bing page. That's what I'm trying to simulate. Uh, so that's what I have. Then I have simulating this entering search criteria. Then third step would be actually clicking on search. Uh, or basically doing something to search and last step would be verifying the result okay um <clears throat> so let's go back so in this right in this particular example um i have this uh, this as a basically this parameter right so this one whole thing will go in as a 
uh, and the uh, capture is part of the flow through the capture group and arguments and that will go to the as a data value so if i come back here uh, let's go to the step definition steps and step definition here so i have this thing when i enter this search criteria then i should be able to do something else right so that's what i have it here um, so these are arguments these are capture groups i created and flows through the argument here now my step here let me go back and correct something here so i don't want uh, this one right to be part of it so i need to i can correct it or basically depending on how you wrote it right you guys know how to uh, correct it right so you should be able to correct it and finally when i run it then i should be able to run that this task without any issues right so it, it says one pass four pass right um, and all those things same way if you are loan calculator one uh, here I am. I have the only positive one currently, right? 2060, and uh, I have corresponding class called loan calculator. Now loan calculator has one additional method called login here. Um, so typically, uh, this this login method corresponds to uh, basically it, it is for this particular step, right? Even I am logged in as a dealer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have all these methods in my loan calculator class. So login, access calculator, calculate, input loan amount, and verify payment. Okay. So that's where uh, we are. Uh, let's see what else we had in the steps, right? So important part, how do we hook up all the classes from the step definition? Okay. So that's where I'm creating my loan calculator object here by calling new and then once i get the object created i can refer to all the methods okay those are all instance methods so you can call it from uh, any step here afterwards so i can call it look first first of all i'm doing the login and these are defined in the environment.rb file that, that i have which i have it here i have defined the global variables okay so that's what is coming from the environment.rb file Okay, so let's go back to the loan steps. So each step I am performing some action. Okay, so if I am passing the positive monthly payment or negative monthly payment, then that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so that's what I'm sending in here um, and everything. Okay. Now I'm all, all I'm doing is writing some uh, printing out some certain things here. So ignore that part. But ultimately, my goal is to actually verify something at that make sure my test runs once i hook up the actual web drivers part. Okay. Sorry, yeah so we are passing positive and negative yes so in that case uh, uh, can we uh, say that if uh, the payment is greater than zero uh, you can put any kind of logic that you need so okay right. i mean here i would suggest you put in the class itself oh, okay. class. yeah class uh, class that's where you handle all the logic I mean, uh, you can put certain things here, like uh, some basic logic as well. If equal statements is fine, but if you are doing performing some action type of work, put it in the class. Yep. So basically, here, right? If, if you can check here, if amount is greater than zero, then call something, some other method versus the other method, right? You you can do that. Yeah. Um. So here, well, what I have is uh, this statement here, right? So what she is talking about is having. Uh, I think that was the second scenario here when I input loan amount of negative 400 or something like that. Right? Then I shall not see uh, or shall see something else. Uh, shall see error message, right? Let's just put error message. What, what it is, is uh, doesn't matter. Right? So this is what we are talking about. So the same since i have this this thing is same right it be both of that only thing different is value right so i have only single step that i'm doing here uh if i go back to my loan steps so my this step will handle both of them because i have this uh, expression uh regular, regular expression here that will handle both steps okay positive and negative so here i can put some logic if 
loan amount is greater than or negative, then go call different method. But if this is the input, so I'm not sure it will be worthwhile for setting it up here. You might want to check it here because this is where your uh, uh, basically it should be different. So verifications part, this this part, this is the verification, right? You are verifying different things. So you have to see, I mean, where what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Also, uh, here we are, here we are, yeah. We have to create yourself. Or yeah, you, you have to create yourself. Yeah, you, you're you you going to keep adding this. So if I have other users, right? So I can say, uh, what is admin user or super user? Because you, you have, this is a single place where you're going to put all your global variables and uh, whatever you are sending it. If it could be the Arflon URL, right? Or certain URLs. So let's say we have Arflon URL. You are using everywhere, right? You don't, don't want to hard code. So you put it here. HTTP W R flown uh, cloud. What is that? I forgot myself. R flown training dot cloud app. And then I can reference this global variable anywhere in wherever I'm uh, any step definitions or step step files anywhere for my classes. And this is only global variable that I'm storing. Uh, which one? Is it only global variables that can be stored in the same? Uh, no, you can put other things, there, but typically, yeah, you want to put uh, only the global variables or something like that. I mean, there are other things we'll see uh, as part of the framework, we'll be putting it in. Yeah. But like uh, you have, uh, what other files is that you guys dealt with? What other file you guys created earlier, other than env.rb? hooks.rb right so you can have hooks.rb that's where you can put hooks in there you can also put the hooks here okay but you want to organize it in separate file hooks.rb you can always dump everything in this file but that's not a good practice just keep it separate in the hooks.rb let me just go to the bing url right so those two urls you can put it up here All right, is everybody good, right? So I sent you this project in the email and you should have this project and you can restore it. Uh, and then today's exercise will be built on, on that project, okay? Uh, but I think if you guys already did it, then you don't have to. Those who did not complete both exercises, that's, that's the only thing. All right, so let's, uh, let's come back. So uh, we, I'm, I'm skipping one module. We'll talk about that next Saturday because that's that's where some of the framework stuff fits in. How are we gonna do a little bit more advanced stuff, okay? But let's build our complete test today. Um, so today we'll talk about the web drivers and we'll start with the water and Selenium we'll talk uh, basically next uh, Saturday as well. Okay. You guys have it, right? Uh, this one? Okay. Um, so as I said, right, uh, web driver, uh, guys, you just pay, just close out your laptop, okay? Otherwise, you guys will struggle later on. Um, so, web driver, right? It says that is a kind of like a last step in the automation process. But the main goal of the web driver is to simulate the user behavior, right? So, we build all the lot of different components, but we haven't dealt anything with the browser yet. We want to simulate that, and that's where. Actually, the, this web drivers come in the picture. So, water and selenium both are simply web drivers. 
which allows you to interact with the browser. It can be Chrome, it can be IE, it can be Firefox, any browser. As long as you have the libraries available, uh, remember when we did like initial installation, we had those three files and we dumped in a certain directory, uh, basically. So like a Chrome driver, you have IE driver and uh, Firefox driver. And uh, you put it in a certain directory so that uh, this driver, uh, it allows you to interact with those three browsers. So what happens is uh, the water library utilizes those three individual uh, libraries and then it creates a sim similar to the user action. Okay. Um, now you guys know, right, what uh, water is pronounced, web application testing in Ruby, right? That's where the name came from. Um, and this is how you install it. Jam install water. I think this is uh, kind of like a bit old. This one was the older version. Uh, but now you can just install using jam install water. Okay. Um, that's all you need. And it supports all these uh, different kind of browsers like Safari and uh, Chrome, Firefox, IE, all those things. Um, <clears throat> so you can correct this one in slide if you need. Okay. It's jam install water. That's the only thing. And I'll correct my upgrade mine as well. Um, <clears throat> so typically on the web page, right? You're gonna see a bunch of controls, basically. And this is kind of like a one example of the web page. Uh, but if you look at the R floor, so you have various controls, right? So you have text box, you have multi-line text box, you have radio buttons, um, and you have drop-down list, right? You have these are the actual buttons over there or file controls, or you could have check boxes. There are numerous controls you you could have over there. Um, the good thing is web driver supports most of the controls. Okay, so you you can interact with any of those controls as long as you get a handle on the control, um, and we'll we'll see how we can get handle on this control, and then simulate the user action. Okay. I think we already talked about this one, right? How we are what we are doing when we say simulate, right? You can either click on it or input some data. Right, that's, that's all we are talking about, uh, basically. Um, <clears throat> now, how the web driver interacts, right? As I said, I mean, web driver uh, <clears throat> will interact with this, uh, basically those elements, those uh, HTML controls, uh, by basically gets a handle, and then set some values or read some values, or you can click on it if it's a button, uh, and uh, those things. Now clicking or setting, right? You can click on everything. I mean, it, it, there, so there are properties of the HTML element, basically. So like text box, right? So you have to set some value when you are saying, uh, when I'm putting the value, inputting the value. So that means you have to use the set operation. When you are reading the value, you just read the value, basically at that point. And we'll see what's the difference there. But when you are talking about uh, button control, you just click on it. So those are certain uh, methods available in the driver basically object, okay? And that's that's what we'll see. These are the two primarily actions you're gonna be using on the driver, either click or set. So here, something like that. So you have a browser, right? It, this is a general, very generalized format. So you have a browser, right? Then you have a HTML element, what is the, whether it could be text box or so you, you can say browser dot, whatever the text box, you can say text, um, and then what is the ID? So with the specific attribute, okay? What is the name of that element or ID of that element? And do some action. So you can say dot set and whatever value you want to specify. After. Or you can say dot key, okay? So this is a very general. This is what we're going to follow, okay? This form. This is how you can uh, uh, basically work with it. By the way, I think uh, most of you are familiar with, little bit familiar with that TML, right? Um, let me just recap a few things here. So we'll go quicker on the HTML side of things. By the way, what's uh, in the HTML? Do you guys remember? So this is uh, like HTML, right? Tag here. Uh, what's missing here, generally? 
So I have HTML, right? HTML. Then I have closing tag here, HTML. Okay. Then I have body here, right? Body section. So this is a body, and then I have whatever additional things as slash body. Uh, what do we, what is the first part? Uh, what, what, what there is a section, there is a header, right? So there is a uh, header, right? So this is where your your title and all other things will go in, in the header section, okay? But here the header is not included, right? Yeah, it, it will still work. You can still create a table page of it, uh, but it's just not showing the header. So you have two part, okay? A header and um, the body. And body is that's where your most of your controls are. That's the one you can interact with. Okay, that particular section, not the header. I mean, header you can interact, but not many people will do that. <clears throat> so let's come back here. Um, so HTML element, right? Um, so when we looked at it, so they have certain properties as well. So if you talk about the text box, right? So what is the element for the text box in that on the HTML? Do you guys remember? How how can I write a HTML uh, for text box if I have to show the text box on the page? What is the name of the tag HTML tag that you can use? So if I have this page, right? And I have I'm just going showing this text box. So okay, so. You remember that, right? So you have input, and then you have um, whatever the ID you can specify. ID is equal ABC, right? It could have also have a name is equal whatever name. By the way, IDs and names are different; doesn't have to be same. Okay, but most of the time you will have the ID um, associated. Then it will have a text. Uh, actually, with text or value, text is equal whatever. So that word will show up in the whatever you put it in. ABC. If you put it in ABC here, then it will show up ABC here, right? Um, so HTML, every element has some type of um, name and value pair attribute. So this is ID. It's kind of like a tag, um, and then it has a value called ABC. This one, this is this is a name. Tag, basic attribute, it has a value called whatever value you specify. Same thing, text and value, right? So all those name and value pair are like a, this element, okay? Name value pair. So what creates the text box is the input? What is it? What creates the text box is the input? Yeah, input is the main element, yeah. Input is the main HTML tag, okay. right? These are the attributes, basically. Name value pair attribute. Okay, so just like uh, that, right? You have a button. So if you have a button, right? So so you can do two types. Um, you can have a button alley button tag, right? You can do button with the ID and all those things, or you can do input. Okay, this is a special basically submit button, and type is equal submit. If you do type is equal submit, then it will create a button. Okay, but for text, basically, um, I mean the checkboxes, it will say type is equal checkbox, type is equal radio button, and those things. Okay, so those are different elements that you you can have, and you can easily see it. If you go here, let's go back here, um, <clears throat> and we can go to the flow. So this is these are the elements, right? This is what we have. So you can easily see what type of element this one. And if I right click on it, right, this particular, and I say inspect, and you can come here. Okay. So this one says input name is equal to that type is equal to text. Okay, because it's a input input uh, text box. Okay, ID is equal to this. Then there is a class is equal to login input. Typically, the class is a kind of like a CSS. How does it look and feel? 
So we have like a CSS defined. So that's how you have classes specified. Okay. So this is kind of like a mix up the text box for this one. If I do this one, second one, right? So I have input name is equal different name, right? They both are different. So typically names or and IDs are different, okay, for every element on the page. Typically IDs are unique as well. You can't have two IDs uh, for the different elements. Okay. Same ID for different elements. Okay. So that's how you can uh, get hold of this box. Okay. So those are name value pairs and uh, these are called attributes. Name equals that, type is equal password, ID is equal that, those are attributes. Okay. Uh, let me go back one more, go inside one more and uh, let's take a look at the Actually, dealer home page will do enter up data and create a new one. So, here, let's see what else we have. I was looking for something else, but it's not here. Okay. Oh, here, right? So, these are check boxes, right? As I said, I mean, these are check boxes, so I can right click on it, inspect, let's see what we got. So check box, input, again it's input is there, ID is equal that, type is equal check box, right? Name is equal that and, so it just uh, changes a little bit differently, the type, what type of uh, input element is. Okay. But you should be able to read through it, okay? Because this, this is very important, okay? When you are building the automation test, you need to go and grab the IDs or names or whatever uniquely identified. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> okay, so there are a bunch of elements available, right? So you have ID is, is the most important one. You have class, directory, language, style, title, background, disabled, uh, uh, height and all those things. There are several uh, name value pairs you can specify for every element. Okay. So just keep this one in mind, okay? Um, basically, when we are building the automation test. Any question on the ID uh, or the element? Okay. All right. Okay, so let's talk about the actual coding side of things. Okay, so this one was more like a fundamental. Hopefully you guys understand how that TML is laid out, right? So let's talk about what we need to do in order to integrate or build the automation test. Um, <clears throat> so web, web driver, right? That interacts with that TML attribute, right? But how do we actually initiate the process of interaction? So first of all, uh, you need to have the object created because those are libraries, right? Water is a library, uh, gem, uh, basically. So once we install, this is how we can refer in the code, okay? So first of all, we need to initiate the browser. You need to open the browser, right? Get handle on the browser. So this is where we'll be creating the browser, basically, our browser object. The B is kind of like a browser object. You can name it anything you want. You can put your own name in, doesn't matter. But this line will create the browser object. And as soon as I type that in, right, and execute my program, it will open a brand new browser window. Okay, that's what these three lines are. Now here, um, it says it's a Firefox or Chrome or IE, right? So it will initiate whatever browser you specify there. Okay, um, so here, I'm initiating the Firefox, so it will open a brand new Firefox, or here is Chrome and I. Okay. Now, how do I go to the URL? Now you can specify go to command, right? So once I get the object, uh, just like your custom object, right? You're doing dot. So there are several methods available in the browser of instance. Um, you, you can say go to and whatever URL you want to go to. So first line will open a browser window. Second line will take you to the artflow.com or bing.com or google.com. Uh, there are other methods 
like a refreshing. So if you want to refresh, like F5, right? If you press F5, it will refresh the browser window. This is what, how you can refresh it. Uh, and if you want to close it out, uh, everything, browser window, you can say B dot put. <clears throat> so once you have the object right, um, this is where you can. This is how you can interact with the text box. Okay. So this is specifically text box here. So there is a method available dot text underscore field. Okay. So what I'm saying here b dot text underscore field, and uh, then I'm specifying the ID of the text box, and then I'm setting dot set. And I'm setting this value in the text box. Okay, so ID and this is a special symbol equal and greater than sign. Okay, what it says is grab this uh, get handle on this uh, whatever ID is here. Okay, and then set and whatever value you wanna set. For example, here it's a water web browser. Okay, it will put uh, over that particular value. So that ID is the input value or the? Yeah, this is the this is the value that comes from the browser. Okay, so whatever ID, if it's a generated ID, you have to go to the browser uh, and oh, just like I was looking at ID attribute, right? Yeah. That's what the value comes. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what the value. Is. So the syntax is according to the object, right? Uh, it's very similar for Selenium as well. Similar. Okay, it's not same, but it's a similar, which will will go tag talk next. Okay, um, but yeah, this is the way you can get handle on this uh, uh, text box. Once you get a handle, right, on the text box, you can do anything. You can set the value. Here, I'm reading a value. Okay, so it is, it's a B dot text field ID up to this part is same, but then dot value. That means I'm reading something from that uh, text box. It okay, says so, get value. So the, uh, what are white Java and comment as when you set your value at? This is, where, this is where you are hard coding here, right? But if you are variable, if you have input value, right, you are passing in from the acceptance test to the step definition and those things, and finally to the class, right? So class, you are passing the variable. Remember the argument, right? That argument, you can just simply say without quote, the argument name, so it will actually set whatever you had it in the acceptance test. Okay, so that's how you can uh, set pass all the way into it, all the way. And I'll show you, I will work through an example end to end so that you understand. Um, okay, so if you want to clear the value, right, then you can do dot clear. I mean, that's a simple action you can do. Um, but as we said, right, dot set and dot click are the most commonly used one. Dot value is something, uh, let's say, you, where would you use dot value, right? Uh, you guys know, right, where to use this one. Pretty much whenever you want to input the data, you have to use it, right? But let's say you want to verify something. Right? You generate something and uh, you let's say your username scenario, right? Where you are rendering brand new user, how do you know the user is created? So you are seeing the actual uh, value of the username being popular at the end, after you save. At that point, you can see dot value if there is, there is, a, is generating the username appropriately, something like that. This is why, you, this is where you use dot value. And if it's generated, then you're gonna pass the scenario, otherwise you're gonna fail. Uh, clear is also available, so you can use it appropriately whenever it's necessary. Uh, don't worry about this syntax. You guys will get used to it because once you do one or two, then you will get used to this syntax. Okay. All right. So there. So what we have is a, like a text box, right? Uh, then you have button control, you have checkbox control. How do you interact using the driver? So let me just go through the most common one and then by the way nobody remembers everything right so give give this handy even at these days i don't remember all the syntax so i keep this type of things handy or google it if you don't know certain syntax mm -hmm. you go google it but let's see what what, what this one is. um <clears throat> the button right how do you click a button so b dot button right so id again a dot click uh you have button stacks if you want to read the text what's the name of the text that's shown on the button. You can dot text and it will grab the value. Uh, here, sometimes the buttons are enabled or disabled. 
right? So you can say dot enable. Uh, this is a question. Okay? So in the Ruby programming, when you say question mark something here, right? Specifically, if the method supports it, then it will return a true or false value. That's how the that's where the question marks are used. Dot enable. Uh, it's saying something is true or false. Okay, it's checking the enable is true or enable is false. Okay, that's what the question mark is. Um, <clears throat> same thing here. The checkbox is right. Uh, B dot checkbox. You you can set the value and you can set a specific value to true or false because if they are checkbox, so you can set true or false. So it will if it's a true, it will be checked. If it's a false, it will be unchecked. Okay. Checkbox. So with that one, can you put a question mark over there? No, you cannot. Here yeah, you cannot. Okay. No. It's only the method supports it. Like enable supports the true or false. Not every method will support. Okay. So that's where uh, I think most of the time uh, uh, the properties, right? Enable or disable those type of things. It can be true or false. Not everything. Right? So is that um, would would it found to be false? You have something to correct. No, what do you, so let's say your scenario is to see, uh, you logged in as a, R for, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, super, not super user, but let's say you are logged in as a little bit lower permission user. Okay. And you go to the page and you what you can see it, but you cannot modify anything, right? In that scenario, you have to check certain fields are not enabled. So like, what was that? Uh, uh, lender user scenario, remember? They should not be able to read or modify anything other than one status, right? So that's where you go and check it. Anything is enabled or not. So you look at certain fields and say, oh, yep, they all are disabled. That's good. They cannot do anything else. Um, <clears throat> so here, a check or unchecked, right? These are your settings explicitly check boxes. Um, Let's take a look at it uh, here. So checkbox is like a special property dot set question mark here because it's a checkbox. It has only true or false value. So you can do dot set question mark, right? Um, but you can, if you don't know this syntax, right? How else would you check it? How else uh, would you like uh, simulate this uh, behavior? You can do the set water value, right? Um, and those things. But here, this is a, like a short shorthand, right? You can set uh, to basically check or not. Actually, no, this one is actually uh, checking the value, whether there is any value there. It's checked or not. That's what is checked, okay? This particular one. Right. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the link. So this is another common one, right? Uh, B dot link, again, this part remains same, and that's enabled. Again, link is enabled or disabled, right? Uh, what is link's text? Can I click on it? Yep, dot click. I can, so it will click, simulate that action. Um, so here I'm using the ID to find the link, or you can use the text to find the link, actual text of the link. Okay. Um, and finally, you can uh, actually look for the link by URL, whatever link URL is, and then click on it. So there are several ways, okay? Uh, it's, uh, it will allow you to do uh, action. So list boxes, right? Again, this part remains same. But with the list box, you can select a value or unselect a value, right? So here, they have select property. Uh, by the way, the list box, right? So let's go back here. I'm not sure whether you guys uh, have it, right? So here I have this list box here, right? Now I see this text here. Let's see here. Uh, Jim Smith, right? Let's take a look at this one. Okay. But if I go to the inspect and I'll expand this one, okay. So they, they are more like a spatial uh, thing here. Okay. So all the options, this is what you see when you click on the drop down, right? But the values are the ones actually stored in the database, okay? So this facts uh, have like a value and the text, text and value property, okay, themselves. So if you select uh, Papa, basically, 
uh, here, then you, you, you the value will be retrieved would be 3180. Okay. I guess this one is created by you probably. Yeah, okay, this guy. Um, so, but again, this ID part remains same, but these values are different. All right. So how do you get uh, hands on the, so here, when I do select, right? So it's selecting the text. But when I say here I do select value, it's selecting the actual value that is behind uh, the list box, or the text, okay? So there is a difference here. Now you, here you can say it's selected, uh, where in this one, so you can check for it, something is selected or not. Uh, you can get a value back, and then you can iterate through it. This, uh, this thing using this syntax. If you wanna run through the list and do something, uh, you can do so using so, this syntax. Where you could see the name of the name in the list box, the statement. This one? No, the top. Uh, dot select value. In this one? <clears throat> yeah, so this could be in our example here, right? This is uh, what the value, whatever the value is. Select value. Is this the value yeah, these are values. But in the the, the James Smith is the example is here. Dot select James Smith. I can say James Smith, but you have to use dot select. If I do select value, that means it will work on the value. Okay. Yeah. So whichever one, I mean, you if you know the values, what values it should be selected, then you can just use select value. But otherwise, you can use select text. So you said that uh, in Ruby we can split up the accessing criteria even before the system is being developed. Yep. So suppose we create, we don't know what is what is going okay. in the system. All right. So acceptance up to step definition, maybe class we can create it. So mm -hmm. this part can be done only after the Yeah, well, because you need to know the IDs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, sometimes the developers are good. They will tell you ID, put the IDs in the design. But if you don't have that part, that means you are not still not waiting. That part is very minimal. It's like one line of few lines of code that you're right whenever the software is there uh, most of the time they will not give you the id so you have to wait till the basically the software uh, is ready or you work with the developer closely and tell me what ids you are getting so i can build those in the step so in the list it's suppose they we need to set one uh, new id rather than new in the list mm -hmm. so but in the right now the system whatever they build we don't see it right so that means where it's, comes the automation then? Uh, give me the, I, I didn't get Suppose the full Suppose in the list, I need to find a value X, Y, Z. Okay, sure. Okay, that's why the state has written it. Okay. So while looking into the system itself, I will be able to find in the list that will have that. Uh, yeah, that means uh, they didn't build it properly. Yeah, you so should have it. So right? No, no, you can automate it, but your test case will fail. Because you are, your test case is saying you need to have that value. So they need to go and fix it. Because that's what you agreed with the development team and uh, with the customer as well. This is what you're gonna see, and it must be passed. Okay, so uh, in that case, like for the top, the first, uh, yeah, select yeah. dot where there I will be mentioning X Y Z, and yeah. my test case will be explained. Yeah, generally Instead of mentioning the value. That's correct. Yeah, if you have mentioned value, it doesn't match. That means obviously it's gonna fail, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to fail it, and then negotiation goes on and see when can you fix it or what is the right way to fix it? Um, but most likely they will, if you had it in the acceptance step, that means it needs to go, go through, right? Uh, because acceptance tests are you sit down with the customer, business developers and everybody in the room, not just uh, that you are coming up on your own. Um, <clears throat> so it will be clear on the list box, right? Uh, just keep this pages handy, right? You, because you have to work with the syntax and everything. All right, so radio buttons are very similar to the checkboxes and uh, those things uh, you can set or basically check whether it's set or not. You can also deal with the images, okay? So image here, image control. So you can check with the SRC whether it's loaded or not properly, properly or you can check the height, width, uh, all those things for the image. And you can also click on it. Right, if it's uh, like a link type of thing or something, you can click on the image and uh, work with that. So just like that, you have DV, DU control as well, right? Uh, 
again, typically everything has an ID, right? Here, I'm showing the example of a class, okay? Where you have class body, uh, that it will select that particular view control. Okay? But you can have easily say ID equals blah, 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 whatever if it has ID. Um, here, if you want to get a text, from the new control, you can do dot tax property and get the handle on the actual tax uh, value. Well, you can deal with the table structure. As I said, I mean, there are so many um, HTML tags. You can, uh, but these are most common one, okay? No, no, this is table on the HTML. Amazing. Yeah, HTML, you can have a table structure within HTML, like mm -hmm. table, and then you can uh, you can have rows and ID. TR and TD, right? Uh, TR is a table row, TD is a column within the row. Okay, so those two tags you have to get from the row. So you what? Just like Excel, right? It is a, this is a, first one is a row, then second is a column. That's what that's how it is. Go to W3 schools if you are not familiar with certain tags, right? Like a you probably will have to keep basically working through it uh, for getting familiar with the controls and things. Yeah, they can uh, find the particular data basically within the table structure. So you have like a T table. You guys know how to define a table in a TML? So you have a table, right? Uh, then you have a TR, which is table row, okay? And then within table row, you can have TD, and then you can have a TD again, uh, multiple TDs, I guess, something like that, can work through. Uh, then you close out the TR, and then you close out table here. Okay. So if you keep loop, looping through it, you can get hand on anything within this TR TD. Okay. Um, so here, what he's saying is TR and this is TD. Within this table, this, this row and uh, this column, give me the tag so that I can verify something if I need to verify. Yeah. Uh, you can do also same thing like click at the links or anything. You can get a row count, you can get a row length, um, all those things. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. Yeah. So in the table one. Okay. So uh, let's say there is a website where uh, there is a table of some items. Okay. So it's keep on updating. Okay. So the table of uh, uh, the thing zero zero one arrays. Okay. Will keep on changing for the new uh, text we are. All right. So how will we uh, validate it that? Uh, particular text is present on that value. Um, so if it's keep on changing, then it's not a good uh, case to verify something, right? Because next time you run it, I mean, you may or may not know. So until you, unless you tie with something else, uh, basically some other stat. Hey, if I create something, then I need to show up. That guy needs to show up. In those scenarios, yeah, it's showing up in always in the first row, then you can put this tag. <coughs> Again, you have to look for the specific scenario. So in this table, can we also check like particular value in the table is X, Y, Z? And we have to check uh, at what location it is present. Um, is yeah, you can do you it. Again, it goes back to the depending on the scenario you are trying to verify. Yeah. Um, remember, what we are trying to test is a business process, right? Customer focus. So like, does everything work end to end in this automation test? Um, so if you if you have business case, yeah, that you want to verify something, you can put those things. Um, yeah. But I, I think you guys will work through a lot of power flow scenarios here, right? So create a lot of automation tests from scratch. So you get you can think through and see what we what we need to test it out. Like a dealer search, right? I'm verifying certain guy in the list, or am I verifying uh, the dealer search shows up in the specific order? So those are two different scenarios, right? If the guy shows up in the list, yes, it works for a single dealer. But if I am saying, oh, this guy has to be on the top because it's alphabetically, then it's a different scenario, right? In that scenario, the things you have to make sure you are using this type of thing, it shows up only first one in the table. 
So there are a bunch of uh, basically things available, right? Uh, you may may not use everything, right? All this, but these are available. Um, and uh, so depending on what you are trying to do. Now this one you probably will end up using, okay? The exit, right? A sudden field exists or not on the on the. So when you log in with somebody and you are not seeing sudden field, right? So you can check. Okay, oh, is it exist? If it exists, then it's you're supposed to fail. So you can use it something like that. Not exist. And question. Same thing. Uh, like select list, enable, disable those type of things. Certain element is present or not. Um, so here I'm not saying text box or chat box or anything. I'm just looking for ID and uh, using the generic control for that. Okay. So what is the difference between exist and present? Um, so exist and present, I think there is not much different. There is a terminology. But if they both are kind of like, a one is kind of like a deprecated method, it's still available. You can use uh, this method. Typically exist is the one that you want to use. But this one, right? This is on the generic element. Okay, that's what it is. It's on the element. This one is on the specific control. Um, this is one of the most helpful ones, right? If you want to uh, save a screenshot of something in the code, you can do that. If, let's say you got an error uh, and you want to save a screenshot of the page, then you can do me dot screenshot dot save. And it will actually save a screenshot, whatever location you specify and put it in. Or you can, um, once you save it, you might want to email that to somebody. You can do that, attach as attached. So there must be a separate code written. If, it, if there is an error, then save the screenshot. No, you have to write the code if you want to save a screenshot. Only in case of error. Only, only in case. I mean, why would you say want to save it otherwise? Yeah, the, right? then we do we need to write extra coding like yeah. if there is an error. Yeah, if there is any error, yeah, then, then you can uh, put this thing. Yep. Um, let's see. So if you want to deal with like a, so this this might be helpful uh, if you are looking at uh, get names of all text box fields iterate through on the page, then you can use something like that. Browser.textfields.each do whatever, iterate through. Right, look through and do some action basically on on a, on each of them. Uh, Sometimes you are disabling, right, or enabling. You wanna just check it and see if they all are disabled. Instead of saying that this guy is disabled, this guy is disabled, this guy is disabled, you get hold of every text box and check it. Is there it's enabled? Any of them is enabled or not? And then fail, right? So this iterative approach comes in the picture. So there are loops type of thing. So it can be done for only text fields or? Uh, no, there are other controls. You can do it for any element. If you just want to check it, then elements and it, you can iterate it through. Okay. So it, so it gets hold of whatever the number of uh, items. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's take a look at here, uh, the waiting, right? So sometimes when you click on certain button, right, it takes you it takes certain time, maybe 10 seconds or more. And that's where you want to put this type of things, okay? So if the first time, let's say you did not put it, right? Button dot wait until present. So what it's saying is wait until the button loads properly and then click on, okay? So certain pages are slow and you may not load everything. So you have to play around, okay, with this, uh, this thing. This is more like a trial and error type of thing. So if something is not loading properly, then you have to tweak your task to make sure you put these two things in. So here it's saying specifically 10 seconds. Okay, when you say 10, so wait for 10 seconds and then click on. Okay. And here, wait until it's present, right? So it will wait as long as uh, basically uh, uh, it shows up somewhere, then only it will submit uh, at this point. Wait while present and wait until present. Yeah, they are they are kind of similar. Wait while present and uh, wait until present. But this one, uh, basically, let's see. This is on the submit, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, control. But again, I don't see much difference. Which are work works basically for for our scenario should be alright. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, you can set the like timeout at the driver level, right? This is this one is saying driver dot manage timeout implicit wait is equal five. So by default, it will put five seconds wait time every. You don't have to say on every button. You can just set it up in the browser. Uh, as soon as uh, you create object, you set this timeout window to five, and it will apply automatically. Um, <clears throat> I think those are most of the controls commonly used one. Okay. Now sometimes there are very specialized controls where you don't have the certain tags or they are basically third party controls. Uh, you can use the X path basically values to find, get a handle on the control. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so kind of like a browser dot select X path and uh, you have to basically work with this syntax here. I'm not a big fan of XPath because it's much slower to find the control on the HTML page, especially if they are very big HTML page, uh, then it, this is much slower version, okay? Most of 99% of the time, you can handle everything using this thing here, okay? Only 1% of the time, you have to do something special with the XPath control. So all I'm saying is look for the control using the condition I specified here. Okay. Uh, so if I'm looking for, I have sort of, if I know which uh, X path uh, this one is available, then I can do that. So as I said, it's very specialized, right? Um, <clears throat> so here, this one, this example here, area contains index.htm, then click on. Because this is a map, and when you generate a map, you, you have certain area. These are coordinates and everything. And that's where you build something special within the XPath. So don't worry about it for now, but when it comes, you have to figure it out at that point. Okay. What was your question? Uh, so that XPath that we are actually using on the application. Yeah, you have to look basically work with the XPath, like element by XPath, right? You have area that contains certain things like at href here in this example. Yeah, this is a very specialized situation. Like a mapping, I don't think you're gonna deal with it day to day. Uh, basis because what is what this one is it shows a map and it has like certain sections and say okay click on OHA how do I click on OHA map within the US map so that's why you have to build and work with specialized things uh, on that. because they are not pure at mm -hmm. okay? they are specialized third-party controls as well but you have a way to do it okay but don't get bogged down into this complexity here let's focus on the basics see how we can do it Basically, this uh, website is the HTML. It's the interaction. That's all it does. Whether it's a Selenium or what. Okay. Uh, how you get to that syntax is a little bit different. I, I mean, it's pretty much same here. How do you create object like a driver and all those things? They are pretty much same. Okay. Here you might see Selenium browser instead of water. Okay. Because remember what we installed. We installed Selenium library. We installed water library as well. Right. So you get pretty much work same way. How do you go to the URL is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Instead of this one, there is another command that you have to use. Uh, how do you get handle on the box? Okay, so he, ID remains same, but this part will change. Okay, and there is a send key instead of set. Okay, so those are minor differences. We which will talk next week. Okay, so these are a bunch of uh, all the elements, right? Commonly used ones. Uh, that we have and I think uh, that's all I have let's see let's see if I yeah these are we already talked about installation so let's let's build one what is it what is it before using this uh, all these uh, water web driver commands we need to do oh yeah yeah um so the, the let's go back. Where, where was where did you see that? Yeah. yeah, here, right? Okay. So these are gem libraries, right? So you are installed, you install it. Now you have to provide instruction to include in your project, right? So this one says, okay, include this library in the project or include this library in the class file. Then you will start with the class file and we'll show you, I'll show you where you can put it in in the actual project so it's available for every all the class. Okay. But it will so at top of the class, you make 
we put this thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do, let's let's take a look at uh, one example here, right? Bing search, I think it's uh, it's good, right? It's a small one. See if we can uh, get it done here. So this is where we had, we left off, right? Yesterday. So as I said, in order to include, interact with the browser, um, <clears throat> uh, we have to include the gem library, okay? So we already installed it. So all I'm gonna do is require water and this one, will tell the software to include this water web browser. Okay. Now, if you don't have it installed, gem install water, right? Then it will throw an error when you try to run the program. Okay. Now, everything else should be uh, that you have to build the logic around it, what the step, actual steps and those things, okay? So here, when we say visit Bing, right? So what are the things we want to do here? You have to we think it through. So I need to open the URL, right? Uh, and then go to the Bing page. So I'm on the Bing page at this point, right? Second, my second step here, enter search criteria will actually, once I'm on the page, then it will actually input the text. Page. Then I am gonna click on search and actually perform search. Finally, I'll verify the search feature, right? Whatever, whether Intellix shows up or not, okay? So this is where, uh, let me go and get rid of uh, this uh, five things here, okay? and. Don't worry about typing it in anything. I have a video, you can follow through if you are struggling, right? Um, so let me get rid of this uh, other command, right? We'll just empty out the print statement. So here, this is where I need to initiate the browser object, okay? And here I'm going to do use the uh, object called B, okay? At B, you can name it anything, okay? I can say browser, whatever you name, wanna name. So why you want to use B versus at B? It's not a global, but it's a class, it's an instance variable, right? Instance, so that means all the, you can refer into any method. And that is available within any method. If you do B, right, that's a local variable. I cannot have it here, reference. Okay, so that's where the instance variables come in the picture. So here I can say water. Right, and if you are not sure about the syntax, best thing you can do is open that page and copy paste it. Okay, those things from here, and we'll work with the Chrome browser, right? So what it is is, uh, so here, right, water. Then I have two columns, okay? and then I have a module called browser. Okay, so we haven't talked about modules here. Okay, which we'll do shortly, I mean, uh, next week, next Saturday. Uh, so this is how you can reference uh, within this gem library. I have a module called browser and that has a bunch of module methods. So this is a module method. Uh, as well. okay. um, so this is how I'm referencing. And last part says, uh, it's more like a parameter, what type of browser I want to send. Okay. So it's here I got it, right? Now if what else am I have to do? I have to go to the URL, right? So I browser dot um, URL or go to, right? This is where I, we are saying go to method here, okay? And here, what? so what I have done is I have defined this Bing URL here in the environment.rb. And this is what I'm gonna put it, use it, okay? So I'm just gonna put dollar Bing URL. So I don't need to type it everywhere. Uh, if the URL changes, I can just update my ENVRB. Done. So at this point, I'm good with the first step and let me just execute it okay? and see if I see anything. And hopefully I can see the browser window now being open. And at this point, it went to the URL, try to go to the URL and finish here. Okay, okay so I don't have any error. I still says pass everything. All right, what is in my next section? Entering the search criteria. So how do I do that, right? So for that one, I can do browser dot text underscore field. Remember, this is the command, right? So if you go here, this is what I'm trying to use, okay? This is the command. Then I have this 
within bracket I have this ID and tag. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is colon ID and then now how do I get the ID? So I have to go to the Bing. Since I don't have developers, they didn't provide me, so I have to uh, wait for them. So here I'm gonna go to the page and right click on it, say inspect. And let's see where the ID is. Okay, so this is the ID here, right? So it has a bunch of other parameters, which I don't care as long as I find the ID. So I'll copy paste it. And here I say dot set, because I don't want to set the value. And you can pass in the argument. Okay. This is how I can hook up, right? Um, so I'm done with that. What is it? Oh, that's, an that's argument right search criteria so now I need to click on it right so here let's see what type of control it is first so I can go to this uh, and do inspect and okay so it's input type is equal submit right so this is a kind of like a button type of thing okay and uh, let's see ID go dot click right because i need to click on it when i say search remember you don't you don't have all the information which is fine but as long as your class is ready you're good you all you need to plug in is okay how do i do my action that's all when you have this thing and it doesn't take you much time it probably you can wrap it up in like a half an hour or type of thing just four or five lines and get it done very quickly okay and finally right so this one will click on it and see what what happens so every time you do something, right? Let's just go run it so that you can see if it's uh, progressing or throwing you error. So at least I'm doing it, bringing it up, passing it, right? Here. Yeah. All right, so how do I verify, right? That's where the things come in. So in the browser, there is a special property called browser.tax. And what I'm, what I'm going to do is, so what it, this one will do, it looks as a tag, a page, page tag, okay? Anywhere Intellix offer is present, I'm good, basically. Um, because that's what I need to verify, whether it shows up on the page or not. And here I can say include, tax dot include, question mark, and then I can specify result, okay? So what this one will do is, uh, it will check, execute this line and return true or false. So what I'm saying is browser dot tax dot include question mark result. Okay, so it will check for this thing and say yep, it's true or false. That's all it does. And if I run it, okay, so it still ran. Nothing basically still passing, right? Yeah. Remember, this method is returning true or false. Okay. So if I go back here, let's put uh, IntelliX software. Okay. So now I'm changing my test case. Let's see if I run it. It still passes. It's not supposed to pass. Right? Yeah. So we are missing something, right? So here is what we are missing, okay? So here you have to go back to your step definition, okay? Because you haven't told, told the software yet where, what, when does it pass and when does it fail, right? So this is your step here. And here you are calling this method, which is returning true or false, but you are not using it to pass or fail anything. So there are a couple of ways you can do it, okay? So here, uh, you can simply say should equals true, okay? So what it's saying is, when you write it, right, this should be true, okay? Then only pass the test, basically, otherwise it should fail, okay? Or you can make a simple, different way here, fail unless, right? There is another way. You can say fail unless, this is true, okay? 
So un until unless you see something correctly, you can you can fail. So there are multiple ways you can handle that. So let's leave this one in fail unless. Um, and I'm gonna run it here. So this time it passed, but if I go, let's go and change it, right? Make sure save it, and I'm expecting it to fail now because I'm putting uh, different text in there. And see if it passes. If it passes, that means something else is wrong. Now it failed, okay? And it should say that I shall see this particular step, it failed, and this is where I can uh, basically uh, take a look at it, take a screenshot at that point, save it, or it attach in the email and send it, okay? Is everybody clear? So if I change it back here. No, but remember what's your goal? Well, you have to make sure this text shows up on the search result, right? So if, I, if I'm running it manually, I come back here and I'm expecting Intellix software. Uh, what is that? Oh, oh, Ruby Cucumber Training in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm showing up in the top, right here. But if I do, um, if I'm verifying the Intellix software, so this one will pass because the text contains that. But I don't see Intellix with the 5x and software here, okay, on the page ever. So that's the reason it's gonna fail. Your expected result doesn't match with the actual result. So those are the things you have to be uh, watch out for. You have to watch out for and uh, build it in your test. Okay. So everybody clear? At least got some idea, right? Um, <clears throat> any question? I mean, so far, what we discussed. So let's let's build uh, this small test, okay? So I want to make sure you have everything set up, including the browser and everything, okay? Um, and I'll leave this page open. Okay, here. Now make sure you go and define this Bing URL uh, variable in your env.rb. All right, make sure you have this URL. Right? Uh, in the env.rb, make sure you have it here. Okay, like this. Then only, otherwise you have to type in the URL, uh, actual URL. Something like that. 